A Matissimo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the A Matissimo show. As you saw by the title, we have ourselves another Yuri manga review because I feel like a lot of people seem to enjoy those and I personally love Yuri. Um, but before we get into that, Something kind of special to mention, as many of you might know, or some of the new people here might not know, is I work at a bookstore. I, I'm the assistant manager there, and I like my books. I love my books. Uh, my aspirations in life, obviously, is to be a writer, to be published. That would be a dream come true. Um, but I am currently reading a book that, while I was setting up a table, you know, display the books, make the things look real nice for the customers, I stumbled upon a book. I don't know how or why. Um, but I read the synopsis and I found out it was potentially a Yuri book. Yes, this guy right here, A Fire and Stars. This is actually a Yuri love story taking place inside kind of a fantasy-esque setting. Think like, you know, Game of Thrones type deal, except obviously not as explicit or violent. But still, that kind of setting, you know, there's magic, there's castles, there's medieval kind of deal um, and all that kind of stuff. And it's actually a Yuri story which is super exciting i figured because i'm doing a yuri review right now i thought i'd kind of give it a shout out because i'm pretty much done and i'm loving it loving it so much basically about this princess who is promised to this prince from another kingdom um and she ends up falling for his sister instead of him now obviously that complicates things because while well, they're, they're both princesses and she wasn't promised to her and she's supposed to be the queen to create alliance and all that kind of stuff and it's just super fantastic and i've been really really enjoying this one so a fire and stars if you want a solid yuri in novel form highly recommend this i'll throw kind of the details in the comments below obviously i'm not being paid to review this or talk about this i just want to let you guys know about it because it's it's been a really good ride and last night we had ourselves a bit of a sexy thing oh and it was super hot yeah it was like really well done not like super explicit but just enough details and oh god i love my yuri anyway this week we are taking a look at kiss and white lily for my dearest girl from Yen Press. Yes, Yen Press, how much did you want for this, Yen Press? Oh, we here at Yen Press want $17. That, that was good, Megani Matt. Thanks, I was trying to act a little pompous. $17, which isn't terrible. Still like $2 or $3 more than everyone else. Like, come on, Yen Press. I just finished buying some books yesterday, and they are literally like $18, $19. Thank goodness for owning a bookshop and having a discount. Anyway, this is our Yuri book for the month and uh let's take a look let's see how it stacks up with the other titles we've been reviewing lately i love me my some good yuri and uh, i was getting my fill with a novel but let's see how how the manga holds up for the month of march so let's get right into it with plot all right so as it is with most yuri stories the plot isn't out of this world it's not going to blow anyone away i mean even the the summary on the back of the book is an exceptional and makes me super excited other than the fact that of course it's yuri and the cover i mean it looks yuri so the plot is basically ayako is our main character she works super hard she is the model student at school and she is the personification of perfection her hard efforts have always earned her the best grades and the highest standings in all the classes but now she's in high school as a first year and she is always second second to the urine who is the supposed genius of their year who easily aces everything she does academically and physically which obviously irks Ayako because she's the one working super super hard and Yurine seems to be just always sleeping. Eventually Ayako confronts Yurine, uh, they're both looking at their score or something and she says I'm gonna beat you eventually, you are mine, I'm gonna take you down because I work hard and you just sleep all the time and it makes me really angry. And thus starts their really strange relationship. Yurine is like oh really? And then she kind Kind of fixates on Ayako because she's the first person to actually approach Yurine and speak to her normally and address her as a human being rather than uh oh, she's untouchable we just want her for our club or she's a genius and she's just she's on this higher plane than us and we can't even approach her and all that kind of stuff so i think that's what Yurine finds attractive about ayako to begin with is because she addresses her like another equal individual now Yurine herself uh i don't know she's a little bit of an odd duck she latches on to ayako from this point forward and the rest of the plot is kind of seeing how they interact and the kind of the competitive nature that ayako feels for Yurine and kind of the flippant almost flirtatious emotions that Yurine seem to seems to have for Ayako and that's kind of the plot that's almost what it says on the back um, it's just like and we get to see their life together kind of thing so it's very slice of lifey very fluffy very Yuri ish and uh, I don't know it didn't, it didn't super grab me the plot I mean there wasn't really much to grasp onto and be like okay this is super exciting and 
happening and dramatic and maybe they're gonna get to the name that i don't know there's two uh, there's two other girls inside the story uh one of them is mizuki and moe and they're on the track team and they want to recruit urinate because again she's exceptional in everything and they kind of have their own plot line thing where they seem to be super close and one's the prince figure the other's the princess type figure and they seem to have this relationship that gets explored later in the story but that is your plot does that grab you well it has yuri elements so of course it grabbed me but it really depends what it does with the story itself as to whether or not i'm gonna stick around so yeah that's pretty much it for plot we should probably move on to our megani do you have anything to add since i kind of went on a rant because i didn't want to screw anything up nah it's fine just do the show on your own i don't care easier for me i get paid either way yeah we really don't make much doing this megani what so if you saw the cover, you think, okay, this looks pretty good. Like the art on the cover is quite lovely. And I would agree with you. The art is unremarkable, but good. Now, let me explain myself here. When you're looking at it, it's pleasant to look at. Everything comes together really nicely. It's impressive. It's high quality. The characters look very attractive. The backgrounds are good. The tone use is solid. The lines are sharp. Everything looks really pleasant. The chibi versions, the various facial expressions, everything looks very good, but still somehow unmemorable i don't know if it's because the art felt kind of generic like it didn't really have a unique presence about it but nothing about the art was super stand outish to me kase san and morning morning glories while like i said it wasn't objectively a beautiful looking piece it had so much personality and had so much unforgettable moments artistically that i really enjoyed with it whereas i didn't have that with this i didn't have a super fun time looking at this art oh that sounded a little lame super fun but yeah the art is good it's very good it's one of the best yuri artistically that we've seen so far but i think maybe because the plot maybe because the story maybe because the characters i just didn't find it as memorable as some of the other yuri that we've seen so far i love the art it's very pleasing to look at but there is some well concealed same faciness going on there all the characters do look very similar if you were to remove their hair color and style you would have a difficult time for the most part telling who is who i do like ayako i like her design a lot i like her kind of wavy hair she's a very unique looking individual as a main yuri female lead and even yurine who while personality wise i can't say i love her i liked her design as well and i liked the cover and i liked seeing these two and i was really hoping for maybe something more and maybe that's why i'm not as impressed as i wish i could have been the art is good don't get me wrong it just didn't hit me the way i wish it could have so i think some people will like it more than i did i think it was nice i think it was pleasant looking everything came together really nicely with the shading and all the toning and i'm repeating myself so i'll drop it there drop it like this hat and i'll just say the one thing that i did find outstanding was the expressions the expressions probably were the best thing inside this piece um, while everything else was above average at best the expressions i found were some of the best inside all the yuri manga that we've read when the girls blush in this they really blush and you really feel how flustered they are and you really it's just really emotionally impacting and i found it very riveting to see the various awkward moments that some of the characters go through like ayako she's super adorable when she blushes and mizuki is even adorable whenever she blushes she really kind of counter fights counter fights <laughs> okay just counters is fine she really counters that prince persona stock character type and really kind of goes against it without maybe even seeming to want to which i like a lot her relationship with moe is nice but we'll get into that more inside development art is solid looking at these pictures i'm sure you can tell it's a good looking piece but what holds this yuri back in general well let's let's get into that let's talk about development okay so development this was a tough one. This Yuri in general was a hard one for me to review because I feel like I should like it more than I do. But I don't know, maybe I've just been spoiled with a really good Yuri like Bloomin' to you. But this one just didn't stand out to me. So I'm going to pick out things that I liked about it and things I didn't like about the development. Ayako, our main female lead, I like her. Main female leads in Yuri tend to be kind of boring, especially Milk Morinaga's. They always seem to fall under this kind of dopey, like cutesy, woopsy kind of character type that I'm not really a fan of. That's why I bloomed into you. I was really into this particular manga. Ayako is interesting. She's a unique main character, which I like a lot. She has this persona as the class representative and perfect student idol type individual that, despite getting second place, is still revered as someone to strive to be like. Um, but behind that smiling face, she actually is a little bit of a bitch and i like it like she's kind of mean she's a little antagonistic she's a little vile toward urinate especially whenever she's with her roommate mizuki and she just has a 180 shift in her person 
personality and that to me shows some depth and shows some i don't know it's just interesting that she's not the actual perfect type individual especially when she's confronting urine i like that a lot and i like her character design a lot and i want to see more of her and more development from her in this for the most part you have this kind of cat and mouse thing going on between her and ayako and she has this moment where she almost forces herself to kiss urine to kind of take charge of this situation for once because she's sick of always being on the receiving end of urine's flirtatious come-ons to her and it's a cool moment i really like that a lot so ayako she has a lot of potential this is not a one-off yuri so we're going to get multiple volumes hopefully not too many so they don't drag it out too long but i do think this has potential in ayako I would agree. The flustered moments she has with Urine were quite enjoyable, despite them being fairly innocent. They were somehow explicit at the same time, which I'm getting my legs. Right, which brings us nicely to Urine, who I feel like drags this Yuri down. I did not enjoy her character very much. I thought I was going to, based on the title. I thought she looked like this fun, sporty type, short haired individual, which we all know I, I love quite a bit. But she ended up being just kind of weird and annoying. Like she's always sleeping. She's this genius type character. So everything she does, she does incredibly easily, which besides being unbelievable, is also just kind of annoying as a character because she doesn't show a lot of growth. I thought she was going to develop nicely because when Ayako confronts her, she seems to be like this wounded animal that no one wants to pay attention to. So she seems super happy and fixated on Ayako. But she also has this weird sadistic streak to her. Every so often, she just seems to be like playing with everyone around her, manipulating those around her and knowing that she's superior. And I don't like those moments about her character. And I, if she develops properly, then this can be used... In a, in a positive way but if she doesn't if she just continues to be all over the place because sometimes she's super playful and fun and interesting and innocent sometimes she's super sadistic and manipulative and sometimes she's like this little cat that's excited and almost aroused by ayako and seems to be super interested in her but Beyond that, I don't know. It's just something about her I didn't find overly appealing or attractive as a character. Some of you might disagree, some of you might not like her more. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But I myself did not enjoy her character very much. Megani Ma, what did you think of her character? Oh, I liked her quite a bit. The sadistic side in particular was, well, I enjoyed it. And that's what some of you might think, some of you might enjoy her more than I did, but that's it. Now, Mizuki and Moe are other two characters inside this that seem to be a thing, they seem to be an item. I'm not sure if they actually are, but it seems to be already an established relationship, possibly. It was kind of vague, which annoyed me a bit. Are they just super close friends? Or are they like thinking about getting in a relationship or what's going on with those two? We do get a whole chapter dedicated to the reason Mizuki cut her hair and what's going on there. And it seems like something's going on with those two, but I didn't find them super interesting. In particular, Moe I found was kind of blah and her emotions just seem so drab and un harnessed in some potentially attractive way. So that was a little bit of a letdown. Now, the character development as a whole, there's room to develop with all these characters. The groundwork has been laid, so I'm hoping the next volume will see a little bit more interesting things happening with these individuals and I might learn to like them more. I want to see more Ayako. I like her a lot. Yurine needs to develop a little bit more. Mizuki and Moe, if they're going to be interesting, I want to see a little bit more happening. Mizuki's okay, but Moe's a little eh, boring. Now, this is an all-girl school. I forgot to mention this earlier. Where are in an all-girls school so of course for some reason the lesbian romances just don't seem to feel as real to me because I mean what other choice do they have you there's no sightings of any males whatsoever there's no mentioning of males even fathers or brothers or anything so it feels like the world's consumed by girls and as many of you know I don't prefer this in my Yuri stories I prefer there to be some kind of male existing so that it doesn't seem like this was the only choice these girls had of course they're gonna date someone uh, those of you know new to the channel that's why you know I I, I like Yuri. I want the girls to choose other girls. That adds that forbidden aspect of it. I don't need them to be all angsty about it. I just want it to be a conscious decision, not a seemingly natural progression of things because there's nobody around other than other girls. Now, while we're on that subject, the Yuri factor in this I find was not overly appealing, even arousing, which I don't really expect from my actual mainstream Yuri. I want just fluffy. It's going to make my, you know, my heart badunk 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 badunk. Okay, you need to settle down a little bit. You're right, I'm sorry. But the excitement I feel when I see a Yuri relationship develop, like inside my Of Firing Stars, like inside the other Yuris that I've read, I hope I said Of Firing Stars right. Yes, I did. I just checked on the ground there because it's just, it's just a line there. I didn't feel that excitement 
with this Yuri. Maybe it's just, maybe that's why it's so lukewarm to me. I don't really care if Yurine and Ayako get together. And that's a problem with the Yuri manga. You have to want the characters to get together. The princess one that Milk Morinaga did, I still wanted the characters to get together and have a happy ending. And this one I do as well, just not as much because I think I just don't find Yurine that appealing. So Ayako, I almost ship her with other characters in this story, like the gal type figure that we have in there. She's super cute. So that's problematic to me and that's, I'm obviously going to continue it because I love Yuri, but that's that's a problem if I'm not fully invested in the relationship. Everything just feels like a big tease. Yurine is teasing Ayako. I don't take the relationship seriously. It's barely even developed at this point. So I'm hoping in volume two that we get more development and we get to care more about these characters and hope that maybe they do find love within this rivalry that they've established. If that's the route this story is going, I I feel like volume 2 is going to be much better than volume 1, but only time will tell, and I only have volume 1, so that's what I'm reviewing right now. Megan and Mike, do you have anything to add before we go into final thoughts? Mm, nah, I'm good. So, final thoughts for Kiss and White Lily for My Dearest Girl is, eh, it's, it's mediocre. If you have, if you're tight on funks, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't buy it to be honest. It's okay. We'll see in volume two if I'm going to highly recommend this. But for now, it's for those hardcore Yuri lovers that buy everything Yuri like me. And it's, it's cute. It's well drawn. The story could be a little better. The characters could be a little more attractive. But they are fairly unique for the most part. I will give them credit where credit is due. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I currently started Hana and Hina, I believe, uh, Secret or something by Milk Morinaga. I just started that today and I'm really enjoying that more so than this already and I will be doing a review on that soon enough. But my next episode will be an award show for this season of anime and my final thoughts on this particular Yuri manga is check it out if you want. If you're a hardcore Yuri lover, buy it. Otherwise, you might want to pass on this one for something a little bit better um, until we see what happens in volume two. So. I think that's pretty much it. All right, just wrap it up. Don't feel like you have to talk. All right, like Megani Matt said, I'm going to wrap it up here. If you have any questions or anything, let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. We got a pretty good Yuri group happening here, and I love talking to all of you about the various Yuri's and stuff that you're reading, and I love it when you recommend things to me. It makes me super excited to have those conversations with you. And that's it, guys. So take it easy, and I will be working on my award show next. It's usually a bit of a doozy. I'm sorry if it's late, but I will try to stay on schedule. If not, well, I'll throw in my other Yuri manga review because those are pretty easy to put together aside from the, you know, the award shows. It takes a lot to gather all that footage. So thanks a lot, guys. Take it easy. Have a great day and enjoy your Yuri. And remember to check out A Firing Stars if you want a solid novel full of Yuri awesomeness. Oh, so good. So thanks, guys. Take a good one. Take a good one. Take a good one. Take it easy.